184 degrees, 185 degrees. Again, I can't even hold my hand on it for that long. Get ready for testing on our four acre living roof. <laughs> hey, what's up everybody? Ed the Palm Professor here. I am standing on top of Aqualand, our corporate headquarters. This is a super exciting moment for me. Our building was designed and built back in 2006 when we moved in. It was designed with a living roof system. Back at that time, it was cutting edge technology and actually it still is, which I'm kind of blown away by. I thought by now, by 2023, this would be a much more common practice, but it's still not that common out there and it's because of the cost. But I wanna show you the reasons why we actually did this and what are the environmental benefits. So I wanna do a little bit of a test. We have a section of the roof that I'm standing on. This section is 700 feet long, it is 50 feet wide. It collapsed back in 2011. During that collapse, we didn't have the funds to completely revegetate this section. So now it is basically a rubber membrane, which is very typical for commercial buildings around the world. What I wanna to talk to you about is what actually happens from an environmental perspective when you have thousands and thousands of square feet of roof surfaces around the world. So I have simple test. Let's take the test of the temperature. Early summer here in Chicago, we had a rain a couple days ago. The ambient air temperature right now is 83 degrees. This roof right now, if I were to kneel on it, it would burn my knees, it would burn my hands. I have dealt with this stuff in Africa. I've dealt with this stuff in South America. It gets so hot, you'll get blisters on yourself. So we're gonna take our Milwaukee tester here. Contractor, no, I will not bow to any sponsor. It's like people only do things because they get paid. And that's just really sad. And we're gonna check the temperature of the surface of the roof. Follow me, let's just find a random spot. Full sun day here. So I said it's 83 degrees outside. Let us check. What is this guy gonna say? 183 degrees, 184 degrees, 185 degrees. It's a 100 degree difference. He's Mr. 101. 100 degree difference. It's only 83 outside right now. Imagine if you're down in Texas. Imagine if you're in Arizona. Imagine if you're down in Florida where we routinely have 100 plus days with intense sunlight, much more intense than here in Chicago. The roof surface would actually be well over 200 degrees. That's why they call me Mr. That will vaporize water. It's gonna boil water off, which brings me to the next test. Let's actually talk about water now. So I have a five gallon bucket, not 100% full, three quarters of the way full, irrelevant. When we get a rain here in Chicago, you get a rain anywhere in the world. Very interesting. We have thousands of square feet, tens of thousands of square feet of roof just on our building alone. Here in Chicago, we get over 40 inches of precipitation. Just one inch of that, one inch of rain per square foot is 0.62 gallons of water. So when we get a rain event, and it falls on this bare rubber roof, what's gonna happen? Pretty obvious. This is pitching away pretty hard. Let's actually see exactly what happens when we get a rain. As you can see, we have instantaneous runoff. We get a heavy rain event and it runs off from point A to point B as quickly as possible because from an engineering standpoint, you wanna get the water away, which is good for the building, but it's bad for our environment. We wanna do the exact opposite. We wanna slow rainwater down, which is why we have vegetated roofs. But I wanna point out one other thing very quickly. All of that water just came down and it ran across a roof surface that was 185 degrees. Let's check what the surface temperature of the water actually is right now. It's a little cooler, obviously, because we had water, cold water running over it, but that water is 135 degrees. That may not seem like a big issue, but when you have 135 degree water, we routinely get midsummer thunderstorms. We have crazy evaporative transpiration happening just west of me, out in the plains of the United States. We have corn, we have soybeans, we have fields. That process of evaporative transpiration sends trillions trillions of tons of water vapor up into the atmosphere. As that stuff cools off, we get precipitation. So we get these crazy thunderstorms that pop up on days exactly like today. And so you have a 185 degree roof, which again, I can't even hold my hand on it for that long. 185 degree roof. Ooh, hot. Oh hot. yeah, right. that's hot. Rainwater pours down on it. 
cools the roof down a little bit, but now you have scalding hot water going into our storm sewers. A lot of these storm sewers go directly into river systems for a fish, for macro invertebrates, for all types of those little micro creatures that I just talked about with the tiny creature pond just a couple weeks ago. Those little animals get stressed in nature. You would never find that happening unless you're at the base of a volcano or something crazy along the, those lines. You're not gonna get scalding hot water going into a natural river system. In fact, in certain parts of the United States where we have trout streams and salmon streams and things like that, when you have hot water that goes in, dissolved oxygen crashes. These fish get stressed, they can't handle the heat, and we get fish kills because of thermal pollution. This is stuff that most people would never even pay attention to. Not only is it coming off of roofs, it's coming off of all the asphalt and parkways and driving surfaces that we have all over the place. It's because it's a hard surface. This is not reflective. This absorbs heat. This is our challenge. This is why we want to go to a green roof. So now let's take a walk over to the vegetated section and do the exact same test. Let's check the temperature of the sedum section. Now this green roof has only been on top of the roof now for one year. One year ago today, the soil and everything was final graded. They came in with the crane coming up over the top, dropping in the big sedum rolls, as well as all the different cuttings. Trevor and his team have been very busy cleaning up the weeds and maintaining all this stuff. But now what I wanna do, this is gonna continue to spread by the way. So this has only been in the ground for a year. So what I wanna do right now is I wanna to try to get an accurate measurement of the temperature down in the bottom, not at the top of the sedum, but down at the bottom, because that's actually gonna be the roof surface. So there you can see that soil layer. Let's shoot our little infrared tester in there. Look at that. Air temperature is 83. Down at the root zone, it is basically, it's bouncing between 82 and 84. Make up your mind. So it's basically ambient air temperature. 100 degree difference. We have a 100 degree difference between the surface of the roof from the black rubber to, this, to the vegetated area. Why is this important? Tell me, tell me, tell me. This is important because right now, throughout the world, we have what's called heat island effects. A lot of you in some of those really, really hot areas, that you know this much more than we do here in Chicago. But a heat island effect is we have all this concrete and glass and structures and asphalt. It heats up during the day and then it continues to radiate heat out throughout the entire night. You go down into the city of Chicago, go down into Dallas, even in the middle of the night after the sun's been down for several hours, and you're still gonna feel that radiant heat coming off. This is also putting more heat up into the atmosphere. This increases the intensity of thunderstorms. The East Coast just got hammered with a massive thunderstorm system, and it's because we have temperature differences. This goes back to basic life science stuff, understanding our environment, environmental science. All that heat goes up into the atmosphere, gets up into the upper atmosphere, and it cools off, and it comes down as precipitation. We have changed and altered things. What I love about the simplicity of coming in with a green roof, this is actually old technology. Centuries old technology. Thousands of years ago, there are ancient buildings right now that have vegetated roofs for this exact reason. They mediate the temperature swings. It's going to be warmer during the winter and it's going to be cooler in the summer because you don't have that intense radiation of sun and all the environmental factors going into it. Another thing that I think is very interesting, when you look at a cooling system for a structure like this, most cooling systems are typically located on roofs of large buildings. And it's because in uh, urban environments, it's the most convenient way place to put those. You have an air conditioning or a cooling system located on top of a roof and the air temperature is 185 or more degrees. Now you're drawing in your air for your cooling system and you have to drop the temperature by 110 degrees or more to cool it off to make it comfortable inside the building. This increases the amount of energy costs. This is not an efficient system. So now what I wanna do is I wanna show you the other extreme. Obviously not all around the world do we get intense heat. If you don't have intense heat, you're gonna have storm water runoff. Let's take our same bucket test. We have our five gallon bucket of water. I threw it out on the black rubber liner over there and the water basically went all the way off into the drainage system. I'm gonna do the exact same test down to our green roof. A little bit of runoff, and that was a lot of rainwater coming down. Typically, you're not gonna have a deluge, and it disappeared right there. It made it 18 inches. It didn't go anywhere. Let's test the temperature where I just threw the bucket of water. Look at that, 81 degrees, 80 degrees. So you could see the differences of what's happening. We're reducing the heat island effect. We're keeping that water temperature mediated. We're not having that thermal pollution going off into our river systems. The water actually disappeared. It's not going into our storm sewer. It's getting sucked up into the soil structure. 
this is eliminating some of the potential flooding areas. When I said 0.62 gallons of water, one inch deep per square foot, it doesn't sound like a lot. When you start blowing it out, look at an acre. This is a four and a half acre roof or more. When you look at an acre, one inch of rain is 27,000 gallons of water. We had rain a day and a half ago here in Chicago. Thin crust pizza? No, thank you. I'm from Chicago. Wasn't a big one. You could still see water dribbling out because this is a sloped green roof. The water is going to continue to migrate slowly through all the soil. We're sucking up the nutrients. We're increasing the biodiversity of the area, cutting back on stormwater issues. So this technology, again, is there a cost associated with it? Absolutely. But we have to look at the bigger picture that's out there. Why am I passionate about this? I don't design and build green roofs. I am an environmentalist. I love our environment. I love nature. I want to protect it for future generations, which is why I design and build water features. Designing and building water features has tons of biodiversity. Not only that, but I tie these different strategies in place. I love doing stormwater systems where I actually put aquablox in the ground and I could capture some of that stormwater runoff before it goes into our storm sewers. If I had a net, which I don't have with me, would, would have been another good test. Sorry, it's such a missed opportunity. I could rake it across all of these sedums and stuff like that, and I'd be picking up small insects that are living and feeding inside of all the vegetation. This is helping the biodiversity. We actually have birds laying nests on top of the roof because it's a habitat versus this. That's not a habitat. No kidding? No kidding. It's about as inhospitable as it gets. 185 degree temperature, it's wide open, nothing is living there. There is no shade, there is no way to get out of the elements versus a vegetated roof. Like I said, I can't talk about it enough. I love doing biomimicry. I love learning from nature. We could learn from different projects like this, and that's what it's all about. This is exactly why I wanted to showcase it right here on top of our roof at Aqualand. We are a silver lead facility, which means we are going above and beyond to limit our environmental footprint out there. I hope you enjoyed this really cool experiment. It's been a lot of fun for me. I love doing this stuff. Like I said, I love learning for nature. I hope you did too. If you want to learn more about green roof construction, check out our past videos.